Hey everyone, welcome back. Today we're going to dive into something that's, well, it's practically taken over my social media feeds lately. Magnesium glycinate. Oh, absolutely. It seems like everyone's talking yeah. about it. Yeah. Better sleep, calmer vibes. Yeah. There was even this one video I saw, I think it was on TikTok, and it had something crazy like 16 million views. Yeah. 16 million. Wow. So we're going to break down the hype, see what the science actually says, and figure out if magnesium glycinate is really worth all the buzz. And thankfully, we've got our expert here to help us untangle it all. Happy to be here. Now, one of the first things that jumped out at me when I was researching this was the emphasis on glycinate. We're not just talking about any magnesium here, right? Yeah, that's a really important distinction. You see, we're talking about magnesium, you know, that essential mineral our bodies need for like hundreds of processes. But when it's combined with glycine, which is an amino acid, it becomes much easier for our bodies to absorb and use. So it's like magnesium got a, what, like a VIP upgrade? Exactly. Think of it this way. Sometimes magnesium on its own has trouble getting to where it needs to go in the body. Okay, makes sense. But when you pair it with glycine, this is called chelation, by the way. It's like giving it a special key to unlock those absorption pathways. Okay, that makes total sense. So let's get into those benefits everyone's raving about, especially online. Sleep and anxiety relief seem to be at the top of the list, with magnesium glycinate being touted as some kind of miracle chill pill. What's the science behind all that? Well, when we talk about sleep, magnesium plays a crucial role in how our bodies regulate it. In fact, it's actually involved in producing melatonin, that hormone that basically tells our bodies it's time to wind down. Ah, uh, so it's working with our natural sleep rhythms, not just knocking us out like, say, a sleeping pill would. Exactly. That's a great way to put it. And studies have actually shown that taking magnesium glycinate can lead to deeper, more restful sleep, prevent that dreaded afternoon slump, and it might even help with things like insomnia and restless leg syndrome. Wow, I can definitely see why people are so drawn to that. Now, what about the anxiety relief part? I keep seeing magnesium glycinate being called like a natural calmer. How does that work? Okay, so to understand this, we have to get into how our brains work a little bit. Our brains rely on this really delicate balance of these things called neurotransmitters. They're basically chemical messengers that control everything from our mood to how well we sleep, you know? Right. And magnesium is really important in keeping all of that balanced. Interesting. It can actually influence something called GABA, which is a neurotransmitter that basically acts as a braking system for our brains. A braking system. Okay, I've never heard it put like that, but I kind of love it. Yeah. So GABA helps to calm things down, reducing those feelings of overwhelm and anxiety. And magnesium can indirectly support how GABA works, which then promotes this sense of relaxation. So it's not that magnesium is like magically erasing anxiety, yeah. but it's more like it's giving our brains what they need to manage it better. Exactly. That's a great way to think about it. And honestly, this is just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to what magnesium glycinate might be able to do. There are so many potential benefits we haven't even touched on yet. Wait, there's more. Okay, I need to hear all about this. Well, you know how we were saying earlier that magnesium is involved in tons of bodily processes, right? Like hundreds, I think you said. Right. So it's also really important for your muscles to function properly. Which, duh, duh. important for the gym and all that. But it plays a part in other stuff too, right? Big time. Like digestion, magnesium can actually help, you know, keep things moving smoothly. Okay, so no more digestive woes I'm following. What else? Well, because it helps with muscle function, it can also help with muscle relaxation. Which makes sense, I guess, because when I think about being anxious, I realize I'm like totally tense too. Exactly. Muscle tension and stress often go hand in hand. So it's kind of a natural muscle relaxer then. It's more about getting to the root cause of what's making you tense in the first place. Right. Now, in my research, I also saw something about migraines, mood swings, and even some relief from PMS symptoms. Mm. Any truth to that? Definitely areas researchers are looking into, and some studies have actually had pretty promising results. That's really interesting. But we still need more research to know for sure. I mean, we know that magnesium is essential for your muscles and nerves to work right, and both of those things play a big role in those conditions. Got it. So it could be a helpful piece of the puzzle for some people, but not some guaranteed cure-all. Exactly. Everyone is different, and it's important to understand that. Now, one thing that kind of concerns me, and I think I saw this in one of the articles you sent from the Mayo Clinic Press, nearly half of Americans might not be getting enough magnesium. That's a lot of people. And we've been oh, wow. talking about how important it is for, like, everything. Yeah, and that's what's concerning, especially considering how many bodily functions 
rely on magnesium to work correctly. And what's tricky is those symptoms of magnesium deficiency can be pretty subtle sometimes, right? Like you might just feel a little more tired than usual or get a muscle cramp here and there, which are things we all kind of brush off sometimes, you know? Exactly. They're easy to ignore, but they could be your body's way of saying something's off. And if we ignore those signs? It can potentially lead to more serious issues in the future. So what's the solution? Should we all be taking magnesium glycinate supplements? Well, not necessarily. See, the amount of magnesium each person needs can be different depending on things like your age, if you're male or female, and your overall health. That's why it's always best to chat with your doctor before you add any new supplement. Especially if you have any other health concerns or if you're taking other medications already. Exactly, because it's really about figuring out what's best for you. So supplements are one side of the coin, but I'm also a big fan of trying to get nutrients from my diet, you know? Yeah. There's just something about knowing it's coming from real whole foods that just feels good. Oh, I completely agree. And the great thing is there are tons of foods that are naturally high in magnesium. Yeah. Some of my faves were actually mentioned in the research you sent, like dark chocolate, avocados, almonds. All great sources. And don't forget about things like leafy green vegetables. Really? Yeah. Spinach, for instance, is a fantastic source of magnesium. I have no idea. Pumpkin seeds are another good one. And if you're more into savory stuff, Black beans are a surprisingly good source of magnesium. I love that. It shows you how much good stuff we can get from just eating a variety of whole foods. 100%. It's always the best way to make sure you're getting everything your body needs. Okay, so now we got to address the big thing, the social media hype surrounding magnesium glycinate. Mm -hmm. I mean, it is everywhere. People are saying it's cured their insomnia, banished their brain fog. The list goes on and on. What do you make of all that? It's easy to get swept up in all the hype, but it's important to remember that those stories are anecdotal. They're personal experiences, but they're not necessarily hard scientific evidence. It's like that saying, right? The plural of anecdote isn't data. Exactly. While those stories can be compelling and might resonate with some people, they don't necessarily represent everyone's experience. And I'm sure the placebo effect is playing a role in some of this too. Right. Because if you believe something is going to make you feel better, there's a good chance it actually will, at least to a certain extent. Oh, absolutely. The placebo effect is so interesting, and I don't think it gets enough credit. It shows you just how powerful that mind-body connection really is. Totally. So even if some of the benefit people feel is from the placebo effect, if they're feeling better, is that really a bad thing? That's a great question. And honestly, if it's not causing any harm and it's improving someone's quality of life, then maybe not. Right. I think it's more about being realistic, you know, yeah. not expecting a supplement to magically fix everything, but being open to the possibility that it could play a helpful role. Exactly. It's all about being a thoughtful consumer and making informed choices about your health. Part of that is understanding the limitations of what supplements can and can't do. Love that. So for someone who's thinking about trying magnesium glycinate, what are the most important things to keep in mind? Like what should they be aware of? Well, we touched on this earlier, but definitely talk to your doctor first, especially if you have any health conditions or are currently taking any medications. Right. Because just because magnesium is natural doesn't mean it can't interact with certain meds or potentially make a health issue worse. Exactly. A good example is if someone already has kidney problems, their body might have a hard time getting rid of too much magnesium, which could lead to some other issues. Makes sense. So bottom line, talk to your doctor, especially if you're unsure about anything. Always a good idea. And even though magnesium glycinate is generally safe for most people, you still want to pay attention to how your body reacts, just in case. Are there any common side effects people should be aware of? When it's taken at the recommended dose, serious side effects are pretty rare. Having said that, some people might experience some mild digestive discomfort, like diarrhea, nausea, or some stomach cramps. Uh, nothing serious, but definitely not fun. Exactly. And usually those types of side effects mean you might be taking a bit too much. So it's about finding that sweet spot. Yep. Start with a low dose and see how your body feels. Everyone's different. Totally. Just because something is natural doesn't automatically mean more is better. You got it. Okay, so we've talked about the potential benefits, we've talked about the hype, and we've touched on what to watch out for. Is there anything else people should consider when trying to decide if magnesium glycinate is right for them? You know, this is something that really stood out to me in the research you sent. We need to figure out what the root cause is of the issue you're hoping the supplement will address. 
What do you mean by that? Can you give me an example? Sure. Let's say you're having trouble sleeping and you want to try magnesium to help. Now, magnesium might support healthy sleep, but if you're also like super stressed out all the time or scrolling through social media right before bed or drinking caffeine late at night, mm. well, even the best magnesium supplement in the world might not be enough to counteract all of that. Ah, uh, okay. I get what you're saying. So it's not a quick fix. It's not just going to magically solve the problem if you're not also addressing the underlying lifestyle factors that might be contributing to it. Exactly. It's like you can't expect to just take a pill and lose weight without also, you know, changing your diet and exercising. It has to be a holistic approach. Love that analogy. Mm -hmm. So magnesium glycinate could be a helpful tool to have in your wellness toolkit, but it shouldn't be the only tool. Totally. It's all about figuring out what works best for you what your recipe for feeling your best is. Which might look different for everyone. Exactly. There's no one-size-fits-all approach to health and wellness. Now, before we wrap up this magnesium glycinate deep dive, there's one more thing I wanted to bring up, and that's the different types of magnesium. Because it turns out, glycinate isn't the only form out there, is it? It's true. There's a whole variety of magnesium forms, each with its own set of unique properties and potential benefits. So it's like... I don't know, the periodic table of magnesium. There's an element for everyone. I like that. And just like how all those elements on the periodic table have different characteristics, each type of magnesium has its own strengths and weaknesses. So it's about finding the right type for the right job. Exactly. Like, for example, I've heard of magnesium citrate being used for, like, constipation. How does that one work? Yeah. Magnesium citrate is known for its laxative effects. Basically, it works by pulling water into your intestines, which helps to soften things up and, you know, get things moving. So that was more of a short-term solution if you're having digestive issues, not something you'd necessarily take every single day. Right. You got to pick the one that's right for you. Then there's magnesium threonate, which I've been hearing more about lately. I think it's gaining popularity for brain health. What's special about that one? Magnesium therina is really interesting because it can actually cross what's called the blood-brain barrier. The blood-brain barrier. Okay, that sounds kind of intense. What is that exactly? Think of it as like a protective shield that surrounds your brain. It's there to keep any harmful stuff out while allowing all the important nutrients in. So magnesium threonate has like a VIP pass to the brain. Exactly. And that direct access lets it potentially do things like impact how well our brains are working, things like our memory, and maybe even our mood could be affected. Wow, that is incredible. Okay, so if you're looking for some brain power support, magnesium threonate might be worth looking into. It's definitely an area where we need more research, but the early results seem really promising. But again, as always, it's best to talk to your doctor to see if it's right for you. This is making me realize we need to do a whole other deep dive just on all the different forms of magnesium because clearly... There's a lot to unpack there. Oh, I agree 100%. There's so much to learn about all the different types. But for today, let's bring it back to magnesium glycinate. We've talked about a lot, the potential benefits, the hype, and everything in between. So for our listeners, what are your big takeaways? I think the biggest thing to remember is that while it's not some magic solution, magnesium glycinate can be a really valuable tool for your health. Especially if you're looking for help with your sleep, dealing with stress, or think you might not be getting enough magnesium from your diet. Exactly. Just approach it with a balanced perspective, you know. Do your research and chat with your doctor. And listen to your body. Absolutely. Our bodies are incredibly smart. They'll tell you when something's off. <laughs> I love that. All right. Well, as we wrap up this magnesium glycinate deep dive, we'll leave you with this thought. We've been focused on one specific form of magnesium today. But remember, there's a whole world of different types out there. So maybe there's another one that's an even better fit for what you're looking for. Keep being curious, keep asking questions, and as always, we'll be here to help you figure it all out. 